In this lecture, we're going to group objects to move them together. During a previous lecture, we moved the robot around. By doing so, the robot's eyes and mouth were positioned incorrectly. They do not move with the entire robot. To fix this issue, we must move objects individually. As you can imagine, it's highly inefficient to move objects in this manner. What if we had hundreds of objects? Unity solved this issue by grouping game objects as parents and children. In the hierarchy, drag the mouth game object around the hierarchy. As we do so, there are two possible responses from the editor. We can position the object below or above existing objects. Unity will draw a line to highlight the new position. However, we can also nest the current object into another object. If we hover our mouse over an existing game object, the background color of the object becomes highlighted. I'm going to nest the mouth game object into the robot game object. After releasing my mouse, the mouth game object becomes the child of the robot game object. You can identify children objects by their indentation. As a mini exercise, try moving the eyes into the robot game object. I'll give you a moment to try this out. Pause the video and give it a try. Let's try tackling the exercise together. It's as simple as dragging them into the robot game object like so. There are no limits on how many children objects can exist in a parent object. There's one major benefit to grouping objects. I'm going to select the robot game object. Afterward, I'm going to move the object with the move tool. As I do so, the other objects move too. By being children of the robot game object, they share a relationship with the parent object. Updates applied to the parent object will be reflected in the children objects. This does not just apply to the object's position. Rotation and scale are affected too. While this feature can be useful, it does add a layer of difficulty. I'm talking about global and local space. To make things clearer, let's reset the robot game object. In the inspector window, right click on the transform component. There's an option called reset. Click on it. By resetting the transform component, the coordinates and rotation are set to zero. The scale will be set to one. It's considered standard practice to reset an object whenever it's added to the scene. While not required, resetting an object can make it easier to work with. Dealing with random numbers can become confusing. Throughout this course, we're going to adopt this practice. I highly recommend you follow this practice. You can't begin to imagine the number of problems that can arise when the transform component's values are all over the place. If the object has moved away from you, Press the F key to bring it back into focus. You may need to rotate the camera to view the face of the robot. So far, nothing seems off, but let me show you something interesting. I'm going to select the mouth game object. From the inspector window, let's set the X position to 1. The position of child objects is considered to be in local space. What this means is that the coordinates are relative to the parent game object, not the global world. Check this out. I'm going to select the robot game object. This time, I'll set the X position to 1 from the transform component. Like before, all objects move with the parent object. However, let's take a look at the transform component of the mouth object. The X position continues to be 1. The robot game object can have an X position of 100. Children objects will not reflect the same coordinates. The parent object will occupy space in the global space. Whereas children objects occupy space relative to the parent object. The mouth game object's X position will always be 1 unit away from the parent's game object. To get the true position of a child's object, you must add the parent's game object position with the child object's position. In this case, the mouth has a global position of 2 because 1 plus 1 is 2. 
This concept can be tricky to understand. For this reason, it's considered good practice for parent objects to have their positions reset. This way, it's easier to understand the child object's position. I'm going to move the mouth object back to its original position. I know this can seem confusing. It's something you'll have to practice with until it clicks. I recommend experimenting with the robot game object before moving on to the following lecture. Try discovering what happens when you rotate the parent and child objects separately. You may be surprised by the values saved in the transform component.